Okay, folks, I had actually intended to make this a YouTube short, and if you haven't seen my shorts, please... Uh... <laughs> God, that's worth doing as a YouTube short just as itself. Have you seen my shorts? Okay, let's start that one over. Uh, if you haven't seen my YouTube shorts, that sounds like merchandise still, but anyway, there is actually a tab on my uh, YouTube page for shorts. And uh, yes, you can, <laughs> you can see my shorts. I've got about I've got about 30 of them or so and um, I, I don't know if I've actually got that many but uh, but I, I'm enjoying making those those are like little 15 second to, to one minute soundbite type clips where you don't really have to pack a whole lot into them and that's one of the reasons that you know I don't do so many of these videos which are longer form is because sometimes I'll have a thought that's like one off and it's not enough for a video but it's enough for like talking about for 15 seconds or 60 seconds and YouTube Shorts is like the perfect format for that. So, uh, so yeah, check out my shorts. And um, anyway, back to the content of this video. Uh, this video is on the Ninth Amendment and, and the Ninth Amendment doesn't get a lot of airplay. Uh, it did today because PragerU just released a video by Sharif Girgis who uh, listed out and, and read out the majority of the Bill of Rights. I mean, he listed all 10 of the Bill of Rights, but he didn't read them word for word. And the Ninth Amendment, he had the opportunity to read word for word, but he actually left a couple of words out. See, the Ninth Amendment reads, the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny uh, or disparage others retained by the people. Now, when Sharif Girgis read the Ninth Amendment, he left out the words or disparage. He just said, deny. And so he summarizes the Ninth Amendment saying, if a right is not mentioned in the Constitution, that doesn't mean the right doesn't exist. And a great example of that is the right to marriage. Uh, we have a right to marry, everybody in this country does, and that right exists despite never being mentioned anywhere in the Constitution. Okay, so the fact that the right to marriage does not exist in the Constitution explicitly does not mean the right to marriage does not exist. But those words or disparage that he leaves out are very important as well. And I was really surprised that PragerU left that out because it's very relevant to some of the discussions that are going on today, especially to some of the arguments that conservatives make that are going on today. Because I see it's like a common argument that conservatives will make as to say, well, what you're saying is not in the Constitution, whereas what is uh, what we're saying very clearly is. Now, that's a good argument in some cases and a bad argument in others. Um, but once something is an established right, that right does not become subordinate or inferior to rights that are in the Constitution. So let's take the right to marriage. We'll, we'll stay on that subject. The right to marriage does not exist in the Constitution. However, it is a right of the people. That means that it is not subordinate to a right that does exist in the Constitution, like the right to religious freedom. And what I will sometimes hear from conservatives is that the right to religious freedom should trump this the right to say, gay marriage, because the right to marriage is not listed in the Constitution, whereas the right to religious freedom is. The Ninth Amendment, by saying that you cannot disparage a right uh, of the uh, that is not in the Constitution by saying some other right is in the Constitution and therefore supersedes it, the Ninth Amendment says you can't make that argument. That argument has no grounds. You cannot use the fact that the right to marriage is not in the Constitution to make it some sort of subordinate right to religious freedom, which is in the Constitution. So whenever conservatives make an argument like that, and, and there's, there's lots of times that I've heard conservatives make arguments like that, especially when it comes to the right to keep and bear arms. You know, it's like we don't have the right to drive a car in the Constitution but we do have the right to keep and bear arms in the Constitution. Okay, well, guess what? You can't use one and, and make it uh, subordinate to the other. That's what the Ninth Amendment basically says. 
you have to treat all rights as if they were basically the same. Now, that's not to say that you can't have some sort of hierarchy of rights. And I mean, I've always said that the right to liberty is something that supersedes the right to life. That's one of the basic arguments of the pro-life movement is that, look, the woman's liberty does not mean the child doesn't have a right to live. So there are ways in which these rights can come into conflict and one right can supersede another on, in, on some grounds. What the Ninth Amendment says is that the fact that one of those rights is in the Constitution and one of those rights is not in the Constitution is not a ground you can legally argue. So I was really surprised when Prager you left that out because that's that's very important. It's it's important to know that and it's important especially for conservatives to be aware of that so that they don't accidentally make arguments that aren't legally sound on the basis of some cherished right being in the Constitution whereas some proposed or otherwise recognized right uh, from the left, right to health care, you know, right to uh, cradle to grit, right to assisted suicide, rights to things like that. Um, that you cannot establish a hierarchy of rights based on whether some are in the Constitution or some are not. So not to belabor the point, but that was what I wanted to get across in a YouTube short, and uh, I hope that this at least got the point across in a longer form. So uh, anyway, thank you for watching. I'm Mike Partika. Please do subscribe if you haven't already, and I will talk to you later.